A lot of people write about science, and I do too quite often. I think my approach is a little different than uh, the typical one. So I'm not especially interested in what is the latest announcement from so-and-so laboratory. Um, usually science is an ongoing, kind of crazy, mixed up soap opera of something. And that's the part that appeals to me the most. The Ig Nobel Prizes are given every year for things that make people laugh and then think. These are real things, these are real people. We give 10 of them a year. They all, the things that win, have that quality that they're funny when you first encounter them and then you can't get them out of your head. A week later you still want to just tell people about them and talk about them. And these prizes are, uh, they're not important, but they're kind of nice in a way. The ceremony, the Ig Nobel Prize ceremony, happens every year in the autumn in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts at Harvard University. We get most of the winners coming at their own expense from around the world. They're in the grandest, oldest meeting place at Harvard, fits about 1,100 people. And there are a bunch of famous scientists, many of them Nobel Prize winners, up there on stage just beaming and waiting to shake hands with these Ig Nobel winners. This is the emergency bra invented by Dr. Elena Bodnar. Dr. Bodnar was a young physician in Ukraine. That's where she grew up. And she treated a lot of children who uh, were injured in the Chernobyl power plant disaster. Years afterwards, she and some of the other doctors, they get together now and then to talk about what happened over the years. They realized that a lot of the damage, the medical damage from Chernobyl came from the particles that people breathed in. And eventually she came up with the idea that in most of the world, if there's a gathering of people, half of the people in that gathering are wearing a perfect piece of cloth that could be used for a few minutes at least to get through the emergency. It can be separated quickly into a pair of protective face masks, one to protect your life and one to protect the life of some lucky bystander. This is how it works. One of the stories in the book, this is one of my favorites for a lot of reasons, is about a team of American scientists who were trying to look back at an assumption. So they got some small animals, some little shrews, and they wanted to have, they wanted to see what happens when you pass one of these animals through an entire digestive system, but without any chewing at all. And one of them, one of the scientists, was the volunteer who let this pass through his digestive system. And they got some surprises. They had expected that all the big bones would show up because they knew a digestive system cannot digest big bones. They were wrong. A lot of the big bones were just missing. And what this, what this said that was sort of scary to the scientists was a lot of the assumptions that many scientists have made over the years in many reports uh, describing many kinds of animals are probably wrong. And uh, one of the things I like best about this, is, and this I'm sort of bragging, is the headline I came up with for this. So I called it the, the tasting of the shrew.